everyone. Welcome back to Weekly Pick'em or Game Time Predictions. We don't really know, but we're calling it whatever it is. Uh, I'm your host alongside Sam Johnson. Sam, how are you? I'm doing great. I am. I'm a little upset that you were able to come out undefeated That's in true. our last week ago. I wanted to have some fun. I thought Northwestern Wrestling could do it. They really could not. Uh, that that was six. That's not good. That was um, <laughs> disappointing to hear. And you, you'll see that I've learned. I have no more sympathy picks for the Northwestern Wildcats. I'm only going to go with what my brain tells me. There's no, there's no more heart involved. I'm not going to give a speech about heart anymore. You know, that's understandable. Before we get too far underway, I have to introduce our guest. We had Chris and Abriel on last week, but now we're joined by Matthew Coronado. Matthew, how are you? I'm doing well, Ethan. Getting to the end of midterm week, uh, midterm week here, and uh, happy, happy to be doing so. So excited to pick some games. Yeah, midterm week hits everyone a little differently, but uh, it's it's not a difficult, or excuse me, it is a difficult time here at Northwestern. Um, but yes, we're predicting games now. We're having some fun on a Friday, so let's get right into it. We've got women's basketball on the road at Ohio State, a team they beat earlier this season at Welsh Ryan. But Ohio State is formidable as they come. Sam, let's start with you. What do you? How do you see this game shaking out? So before I talk, I give my prediction. I just thought it was interesting that last week when we talked about women's basketball, I said one of the only ways you can beat this team is if Veronica Burton, Lindsey Polium, and Sydney Wood all have bad games. And that's what exactly happened in the Rutgers game. I, uh, I couldn't believe it watching it. I don't think that's going to happen again. This is set up to be one of the best games on Northwestern's schedule. And I want Northwestern to host some NCAA tournament games. And I think that they are a team that is capable of doing that. And what better way to, sh- to build your resume for the NCAA tournament with a win against Ohio State here this weekend. I have Northwestern winning 70 to 62. And I think this is a Veronica Burton game. I, I said I want to go with my heart, but I just have a feeling there. Matthew? Personally, I I agree with Sam on a lot of his points that this game seems like it's uh, it's kind of a turning point for the season here because the loss against Rutgers is a big blow to their chances at winning the Big Ten title because they've been pushed out to the very bottom of that top five teams who have a chance at it. Um, but another statement win over Ohio State within about 15 days of beating them um, on February 1st at home uh, that would be a huge win. And as you mentioned, getting a home game in the NCAA tournament, huge. Um, but uh, Veronica Burton and Lindsey Pulliam are going to have to come through for them to, a- to be able to win this game, um, as well as uh, if they don't have Courtney Shaw, as they did not against Rutgers, um, Paige Mott is going to have to have another good game like she did against Rutgers. Rutgers or against Rutgers, she actually, I think, had an outstanding performance despite the loss. So if those three players can put it together against Ohio State, they get the dub. I mean, Northwestern has to be one of the top teams for the tournament. Yeah, you guys mentioned the the loss to Rutgers that came Thursday afternoon, 70 to 54. And it was a bit of a surprise, I'll be honest. But once again, the Achilles heel for me, at least, with this Northwestern women's basketball team is size. Like we just don't, or excuse me, Northwestern just doesn't match up with bigger teams. Northwestern got out rebounded against Rutgers and they lost all four losses this season. Northwestern has been out rebounded Ohio state, a bit of a bigger team, but like we mentioned, Ohio state lost to Northwestern earlier this season. Unfortunately, I'm not as optimistic as, as you guys are uh, with the Wildcats chances, chances, this is just still a really deep Ohio State team. And I'm just, I'm concerned that on the road, following a, a loss that just where things just were off the entire game against Rutgers. And it's just such a quick turnout, turnaround to go from Thursday to Sunday on the road. I'm just a little concerned that Northwestern won't be quite there yet. So I'm going to go Ohio State 65, Northwestern 58. It's going to be close, but I think Ohio State pulls away at the end. I guess I'll put my prediction out there. It's the title of the show, and I forgot to say it at the end of my 
and then my whole thing. I have Northwestern winning uh, in a close game, 71 to 69 against Ohio State. Listen, we saved the best for last. We wanted the guests to have a good final prediction. <laughs> kind of overshadow Ethan there. Everything he said, Matthew says, that's going out the window. Northwestern will pick up the win. Now let's move on to a less exciting basketball team. Let's talk about the men's team. Big bout with uh, with Rutgers coming up. And I just wanted to point out that Rutgers last year was going to break that NCAA tournament drought that they've been in for so long. So I can't imagine what their campus is feeling like right now. I mean, they seem almost locked in. It would, it would take some sort of horrible collapse in my mind for them to not get in. And I'm jealous, to be honest. Like, that, the way our campus, it was lively. It was buzzing when Northwestern made that tournament. I mean, obviously, with COVID, that's a bit harder of a scene to recreate. But I'm sure that their student body is just super excited for this one. I don't think Northwestern has the talent, really, to uh, shut down Rutgers. It's just been tough sledding for the last 10 games. I said last show that we would have some hilarious breakdown against Purdue I guess I was one game off that Indiana loss that's that Indiana loss I feel like we've had seven final nails in the coffin but that was the final nail in the coffin for me I have Rutgers beating us 80 to 55 that's a blowout, a blowout. Um, the the issue with Northwestern men's basketball as you mentioned Sam is an inability to close games what's so shocking is how often that happens how it's just like every single close game Northwestern somehow figures out a way to lose now that was different at the beginning of the Big Ten season when they were figuring out how to win those games started out three and oh beat good teams like Ohio State Michigan State's not as good as we thought they were but still that's a win beat Indiana as well and it's just a weird situation where this team is just so frustrating to watch to watch nothing clicks with the Northwestern men's basketball, just there's always some sort of missing piece. Something's not working and it just kind of leads to their downfall. Like I mean, they couldn't make free throws uh, the other night. And what, one reason they couldn't make free throws is they could never get to the line and Indiana seemed to get to the line on every other possession. But looking ahead, looking at this Rutgers game, Rutgers is really good at home. They're especially good when they have fans. Of course, there's no fans this season, but they're still eight and three at home. And like you mentioned, Sam, they're looking to end that tournament drought. Should have done it last year. I can't imagine they're going to let Northwestern walk into to that arena and and try and ruin it for them. So I'm, I'm not going to go with as big of a blowout, but I will go 75 to 61. Rutgers, Scarlet Knights win the game. All right. So that's two people who don't think it's going to be within single digits. Let's, let's send it to Matt. Matt, what are you, what are you foreseeing for this game? So for this game, um, in terms of the matchup, it's going to be tough to contain uh, junior guard, junior guard, Ron Harper, who's averaging 16.4 for Rutgers. He's their leading scorer. Um, the, on the defensive end for the Wildcats, it's difficult because you have the guards, Boo Booey, and um, and um, who's the other guard? I'm slipping his Chase, name. Chase uh, Adige, perhaps. Yeah, yeah, Chase Adige. Guys who who are young, they're they're they have high agility, but sometimes some of the um, guards that they face um, are able to create situations where they're able to get by them, and they have to switch and. When Northwestern starts to get into that mode on defense, things do tend to fall apart for them. Um, but I think the way that Northwestern might be able to win this game is by, one, getting to the free throw line and hitting those free throws. That's going to have to be a big uh, change, obviously, from uh, the games past here. And then second, um, getting opportunities on the three-point arc. If they're able to hit their threes in this game, they might be able to hang with the Scarlet Knights and go down to the wire. And that's all they need to do really, because if they can get down into the second half, deep in the second half and still be in the game, they have a shot. Um, but all that being said, I still have to agree with you guys that I think Rutgers is just a little bit more talented and the Wildcats are on a bad skid right now. And I don't expect them to get out of it um, 
against Rutgers on the road. So I'm going to say that uh, it's going to be Rutgers uh, 75 and you 60. That that youthful excitement that you heard in Matt's voice at the beginning of his explanation is just him being a younger student at Northwestern. He hasn't had as many years of just constant disappointment and failure. So that's what I'm going to attribute that to. Once again, I said it before, no one has this game within the single digits. So who knows? One, but, one quick thing. I cannot believe. I, I, I'm a senior. So I missed the tournament team by one year. Entering, entering my my four years at Northwestern, I was like, that's like the one thing I was confident in terms of a, a revenue sport having success. The, you know, football was playing well when I when I came to Northwestern. I think they were just off a pinstripe bowl victory, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but Northwestern made the tournament for the first time in school history, and they were returning almost everyone from that team. They were just losing two, Sanjay Lubkin and Nate Taphorn. So one was a starter, one was a role player. And so you return all those guys and you think, okay, got to make the tournament again. Maybe, maybe they were ranked at the beginning of the season. And it's just, it's one of those things where you just, it's, you can't explain it. And it's, there has been a constant uh, across the four years in terms of uh, men's basketball. I won't, I won't say, I won't go into more detail than that, but um, there has been a constant. Uh, And it's, it's, uh, it's just, it's just frustrating to watch. It's definitely disappointing, as you said, Sam. So you had the youthful excitement at the beginning of Matt's explanation and the wise old man, Ethan Four, reminding us of where Northwestern basketball truly stands. Moving on to something a little more exciting, something that Northwestern fans can sink their teeth into. Women's lacrosse starts their season this weekend against Ohio State. I want to be a little respectful to our guest. I'm going to let him speak first this time. Matt, what do you think about the uh, women's lacrosse game this weekend? Personally, as a Northwestern fan, I'm excited for the women's lacrosse team this year. They were voted uh, by the conference coaches as the number one preseason team in the Big Ten. Um, and they're returning a lot of great players. Uh, Izzy Skane and Ali Palmero were named first team preseason All-Americans, along with Sammy Mueller, second team, and Lindsey McCone, third team. So they got a lot of players that are coming back from the team last year who are going to put the pieces back together and probably feel a strong team. So in... In terms of that, I'm excited. Um, they're playing Ohio State, who's, uh, I believe, middling in the Big Ten. Um, and it's a strong conference, of course, so they're going to have a lot of tough games that they're going to have to go through, um, even early in their schedule. So um, in terms of that, they're, they're on the road against Ohio State, but this team is strong, and I think they are, are going to come away with a victory here. Um, and I think... I'm going to have to go with um, probably a final score somewhere around um, I'll give it 10, 10 to five, I would say. Okay. Bit of a low scoring bout, but that's okay. Um, This, this is, I mean, like this is one of the Northwestern teams to watch. If you want to watch Northwestern sports, Uh, a perennial powerhouse, seven time national champion for those who don't know, hopefully you do know because Northwestern women's lacrosse, is about as good as it gets. They play a Ohio State team that, as you mentioned, Matthew, is is middle of the pack in terms of the Big Ten. Big Ten is a strong lacrosse conference, but Northwestern kind of stands alone. Uh, Michigan's good this year. Johns Hopkins is good this year. But it's really Northwestern's, I think, conference title to lose at this point as we enter the season. So I think Northwestern should win this game given that it's at home at and I, I think they will I'm going to go with 17 to 9 so a little bit more high scoring um, the only thing that gives me pause and I, I'm still going to stick to my Northwestern pick the only thing that gives me pause is that next week Northwestern plays a really good Johns Hopkins team twice what I hope is you don't get those situations where you're looking ahead you think you can beat Ohio State okay no problem but okay we've got to we got to go on the road to Baltimore and play Johns Hopkins. That's the one thing that gives me pause, but I'll still stick with my prediction. 17 to nine, the Wildcats win. You know, I, I'm going to say it because this is one of the few chances. Women's across is one of the few chances we have to be arrogant as a Northwestern fan. I'm going to say, even if they are looking ahead, it doesn't matter. This team is legit. This isn't me in wrestling last week saying, I'm going to play with my heart. The smart head move is to choose the Northwestern Wildcats to win. 
That's what I'm going to do. I mean, they they haven't played a game yet. I think Ethan and Matt did a good job covering what the uh, situation is looking like going into this game. I like our team. I like our chances. Give me 16 to 8 Northwestern. Very nice. I'm just I'm personally just really excited to see Izzy Skein play because she is just so freaking talented. So it's it's a really fun team to watch if you have never watched them. Highly recommend it. Um, but yeah, it's the start of spring sports, which is great because softball is right around the corner. That's a team I'm really looking forward to. I'm also a bit of a college baseball nut. We'll see how Northwestern plays this year. Typically not their strength, but uh, we'll we'll see how that works out. But um, lots of sports uh, come into a uh, game time prediction. Exactly. Um, if there are no parting words, I can uh, take us out. Uh, you've been watching Weekly Pick'em with Sam Johnson. I'm Ethan Four. Our guest, Matthew Coronado. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next week.